and welcome to Heidi Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about a very interesting topic and quite a prevalent pathology worldwide, and that is sinusitis. So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of sinusitis itself, let's take a closer look at what are these sinuses. So these sinuses are a connected system of hollow cavities within the skull. And there are actually four pairs of sinuses named for the bones that they're located in. So the first one is called the maxillary sinuses and they are located on each side of the nose near the cheekbones. And they are actually this hollow cavity which is found within this maxillary bone. We then have the frontal sinuses which are located above the eyes near the forehead and they are actually the hollow cavity located within the frontal bone. We then have the ethmoid sinuses which are here in green and they are located on each side of the bridge of the nose near the eyes. And there are three small pairs of ethmoid sinuses on each side. So as we can see, we have one situated on the right side and one situated on the left side. And then finally, we have the sphenoid sinus. And as we can see here, it's located a bit more posteriorly. And this is actually the hollow cavity which is found within the sphenoid bone. So the sphenoid sinuses are behind the eyes and deeper into the skull and they are located here within the sphenoid bone. So now that we know what the basics of the sinuses are, let's take a closer look at what is sinusitis. So the inflammation of the tissues lining the sinuses is called sinusitis. So sinus infections happen when fluid builds up in the air-filled pockets within the face, which are the sinuses, which in turn allow germs to grow. Viruses cause most sinus infections, but bacteria can cause some sinus infections. So what actually happens in sinusitis is we have the swelling and the inflammation of the tissues that line these sinus cavities. So usually these sinus cavities are air-filled pockets, so they don't contain any fluid or any solid material, just air. And when we have inflammation due to an infection of these sinus cavities, we'll begin to see fluid build up within these cavities as well. So what actually happens is we have the fluid that builds up and then we have stagnation of this fluid and then infection of the fluid. So the fluid is usually sterile at first and then it becomes infected with either viruses or bacteria, but most commonly viruses. And when this process occurs, it's called sinusitis. So if we can imagine these airful pockets are usually very light and fluffy and airy. And when we have this infection with this fluid buildup and microorganisms which are dividing and replicating out of control, we're gonna have a lot of irritation, inflammation and pain which these patients are gonna suffer from due to this fluid and microorganism buildup within these cavities. So let's explore that a bit further. So as I mentioned in the slide before, most sinusitis infections are caused by viral agents. The most common viral pathogenic agents which cause sinusitis include the rhinoviruses, the influenza viruses, and the parainfluenza viruses. While Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae, Moraxala catarralis, and Streptococcus pyogenes are the most common bacterial pathogenic agents. So in some cases, we can have bacterial causes to sinusitis, and these are actually the pathogenic agents involved in this process. So when these tissues which line the sinuses become inflamed due to that sinusitis infection, it will cause an obstruction, meaning an inability for this fluid to actually drain out into the nasal cavity. And that's why it causes a lot of congestion and stuffiness for the patient. And actually pain and pressure, which even if the patient touches their cheek, if the maxillary sinus is infected, it causes extreme pain and pressure and they have a headache associated as well as great irritability. So let's explore those signs and symptoms further now. So patients with sinusitis usually suffer from facial pain or pressure, a stuffed up nose, so a difficulty in breathing as well, a runny nose, a loss of smell, cough or congestion, a headache, mucus dripping down their throat, which means a post-nasal drip, a sore throat, a cough, and bad breath. The diagnosis of sinusitis? 
So the doctor will feel for tenderness in the nose and face and look inside the nose and can usually make the diagnosis based on the physical exam, as well as the patient's history and complaints of those specific signs and symptoms, such as stuffiness, headache, pain over those specific areas of the face, etc. So other methods that might be used to diagnose acute sinusitis and rule out other conditions include a nasal endoscopy, and here a thin flexible tube, which is called an endoscope, with a fiber optic light is inserted through the nose and allows the doctor to visually inspect the inside of the sinuses. We can also do imaging studies such as a CT scan and the CT scan shows details of the sinuses as well as the nasal area as we can see down here. So this CT scan is actually done of a patient who has a current sinus infection and we can see those inflamed sinuses which actually appear more gray on the CT and this is due to that excess mucus or swollen tissue linings. So usually the space is black because it's an air filled cavity but as we can see it's now filled with this gray matter which means we have some inflammation and fluid build up there. And the CT scan is not usually recommended for uncomplicated acute sinusitis but imaging studies might help to find abnormalities or suspected complications. We can also take nasal and sinus samples. So laboratory tests aren't generally necessary for diagnosing acute sinusitis. However, when the condition fails to respond to treatment or is worsening, tissue samples, which are called cultures from the nose or sinuses, might help find the cause, such as a bacterial infection. So if we take these sinus samples, we can actually explore them further in a laboratory and find the specific causative organism for the current sinus infection. We can also do allergy testing. So if the doctor suspects that allergies have triggered the acute sinusitis episode, he or she will recommend an allergy skin test. A skin test is a safe and quick test and can help pinpoint the allergen that is causing the nasal flare-ups. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of sinusitis. So to treat their sinusitis, patients are instructed to use a decongestant and saline nasal washes. So if the cause of the infection was a bacterial one, then the patient will be administered antibiotics, which must be taken for around 10 to 14 days. Warm compressors, which is done with a warm cloth that has been dipped in some warm water, can also be used to ease pain in the nose as well as the sinuses. And that brings us to the end of this video on sinusitis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.